Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a tower defense game in Unity. Today we are going to be creating a camera controller that will allow us to move around our camera in the scene in kind of an RTS inspired way. So if you ever played Warcraft or Starcraft you know how the camera feels and that's what we're going to be emulating today. So if you use the WASD keys you can pan around or you can simply uh, move your mouse to the edges of the screen and the camera will follow in that direction or you can use the scroll view to zoom in and out. So that's what we're going to be making today. And without further ado, let's jump into Unity. Make sure you have the camera selected, hit add component and add a new camera controller script. So this is of course going to be C sharp and you can just go ahead and whoops, open this up in Visual Studio and let's delete the system.collections namespace. We're not going to be needing it. And let's just keep the update method in here. We'll be needing that in a second. So the first variable that we are going to be uh, using is a pan speed. And panning is when you move around on the flat plane. So that means in our X and C axis. So we're going to be making a public float pan speed and set that to something like 30. I think that's going to be a good amount. Then we can jump into the update method. And again, we want to check for input in two ways. First, we want to check for a key press. So we, we go if input dot get key down, or actually we're just going to be using get key because we want to move every frame, every frame that we hold down a certain key. And for that we use get key, not only when we press it, get key down or release it, get key up, but every frame. So, uh, and the key that we want to be checking for is the W key. And then we can go ahead and add some functionality to this if statement. And what we will do is use what is called transform.translate. And transform.translate is the easiest way of moving an object because we are not using the physics system uh, to do any collision checks or anything like that. We're simply moving in a direction uh, with a uh, certain distance. And uh, that is specify specified by our translation vector3 variable. And in our case, we are going to be using vector 3 dot forward. So when we press the W key, we will move forward. And let me just quickly explain what this means. So vector 3 dot forward is basically the same as writing new vector 3, uh, where we specify coordinates 0, 0, 1. That is all that vector 3 forward is. Then if we want to add on a speed, the pan speed, instead of one here, we would write pan speed. And to do that, what we do is we just multiply by pan speed. And that will insert pan speed in here because zero multiplied by pan speed is zero. Zero again multiplied by pan speed is again zero. And one multiplied by pan speed is pan speed. So that is the exact same. So we can just multiply and it will put the variable in here. And that's what we're going to do here. So we'll take vector3.forward and multiply that with pan speed. And then we will multiply it with another variable. So we get this effect here, time.delta time. And the reason again why we multiply with time.delta time is because we want our, uh, the speed at which we move our camera to be completely independent of our current frame rate. So if you are one computer that is faster than another, or if that's happening a lot of stuff at once, you won't see a change in movement speed. So we'll multiply that with time dot delta time, the amount of time that passed since the last frame was drawn. So this should actually work already and we could go in here and hit play and you will notice a slight uh, flaw with this. And that is if we now press W, it looks like we're zooming in. And the reason why is we are not using this forward uh, axis right here. We're instead using the local axis of our camera. So because our camera is rotated 65 degrees, we've rotated the forward axis as well. So we want to switch to the global space. And we do that by writing comma space dot world. And now it will be relative to the world coordinates and therefore ignore the rotation of our camera. Uh, so that should work now. And now we can add another input to this if statement. So we both want this to happen if we get the key W 
or, and or is represented by two vertical bars, or if our mouse is at the top of the screen. And how do we check for this? Well, we use the fact, so when our mouse is at the top of the screen here, our, uh, we want to check for the mouse position. And we have a variable in here called input.mouseposition, which is basically a vector three storing the current coordinates of our mouse. And these coordinates are relative to this bottom left corner. So when the mouse is down here, it's zero, zero. And then from there on, it depends on the resolution of uh, your display. So if I move it up here, and let's say that this is something like 400 uh, pixels tall. Well, then if I move it up here, it might go to 10, 20, 30, 40. And then when I reach the top here, it will be at 400. So what we can do is we can say that if our mouse position is greater than, and then use the current height of our display, in our case, maybe 400, subtract, say 10 from that, so that will be 390, and then say if our mouse is greater than, or our mouse position dot y is greater than those 390, that means that we are somewhere up here. That means that we are only 10 pixels from the edge of the screen, and therefore we want to move. So we can use input.mouseposition.y and say if that is greater than or equal to the current height of our screen, screen.height, minus, and then some kind of a buffer there. And uh, we are going to put this into a variable, and this is going to be another public float called pan border thickness. And let's set that equal to 10. So if our if we get the key w or our mouse dot y is greater than or equal to screen dot height minus pan border thickness that will make sure to check if we are within 10 pixels of the top of our screen cool and then we can simply duplicate this and add uh, three more the first one is going to be in the S direction, so that means that we want to uh, move or translate backwards. And we want to do that when we are at the bottom of our screen. And again, up and down is on the Y, so we want to use input.mouseposition.y. And we want to check if that is less than or equal to pan border thickness. So down here it will be zero when we move it up. It will be 10, 20, 30, and we only want this to happen when it's between zero and 10, so down here. Cool, and then we don't want to move forward, we want to move back. And we can do that as well by simply putting a minus in front of the forward, uh, or we could use vector3.back, which I'm going to do. Then we want to move to the right, so I'm going to be using the D key for that. And now we are checking on the X axis, not the Y. And we want to check if we are greater than or equal to screen dot width now, because again, we are now moving over here and then minus pan border thickness. So we will get this distance here. Good. And then we want to move to the right. So vector three dot right. And finally, the left, which is going to be the A key. It's also going to be on the X. It's going to be uh, smaller than or equal to, and it's going to be just equal to pan border thickness, and we want to move to the left. Okay, so that should actually be all, and don't worry if you get a bit confused in this. I totally get why. Um, it's a new way of thinking if you've never done this before. It kind of seems a little bit crazy. Uh, but it's necessary and it's really rock solid. Um, so there's nothing wrong with the code. It's just a bit weird to understand at first. So this should be uh, working and we can now go ahead and hit play. And we should see that when I use the W, S, uh, D and A, that works. And if we go ahead and use the borders here to pan. So I think this feels super natural. 
And you will notice, also notice that if we go beyond the uh, uh, kind of confines of our screen, it still keeps going. And that's fine for your game, maybe. Uh, but I think we should just have a quick way of disabling that uh, or disabling the movement so we can adjust things over here without the camera going uh, crazy. Um, so we'll just uh, leave that in here. And what we're going to do here is simply have some kind of private variable up here and this is just going to be a bool called um, I don't know do movement something like that and we'll just default that to true and then uh, we can say that if do movement is equal to false so if we won't do movement well then we simply return then we don't call any of this code down here and then we can change this variable using some key that we know. Let's just use escape. So if input.get key down, and then we do key code, key code dot escape. Well, then we want to set do movement equal to the opposite of do movement. So we want to toggle that. So if it's true, we set it false. If it's false, we set it true. So uh, that should be it. And this will allow us to simply hit play here. Notice how we can move around. Then I hit escape and it's disabled. And then I hit escape again and we are back to moving. So just an easy way. And that's going to be really, really great <laughs> later when we do testing and want to change stuff while the game is running. Cool. So the next thing is uh, scrolling. And when it comes to zooming in and out, there are a bunch of different ways of doing it. We are going to be doing it the most simple uh, way at all, which is just moving our camera up and down on the Y axis and then constraining that movement so it doesn't go below the floor or go crazy high up into the sky. However, some really cool effect is if you rotate the camera depending on the height of it so that when you view the world from above it will uh, or when you are a uh, great distance from the ground you will be viewing it from above and then as you scroll down you rotate your camera sideways so that it gives the impression that you are now standing on the ground and that you're now viewing uh, more of your world than just whatever you zoomed in on. It's a super cool effect and if it's if this is something that you want for your game, um, along with a bunch of other customization and stuff like that, I have a super uh, cool uh, forum thread, thread that I will link to in the description. So if you want to be more nerdy about your camera controller, go there, you won't be disappointed. Okay, so, but for now, let's just implement the most basic of functionality here. So uh, let's make some more room and uh, let's get our scroll view and when it comes to scrolling it's a bit more difficult than using get key or say uh, checking for uh, whether or not the mouse position is within some range this is discrete I mean this is a boolean state it's either true or false either we got a key or we didn't get a key press however when we use the scroll view wheel, <laughs> the scroll wheel, uh, just like when we do a joystick movement, we are able to control the speed. We are able to scroll quickly or slowly or not at all. And that is where we use input.getAxis. So if we go into Unity here, they've made a super easy way for us to utilize this fact. And that will allow us to very simply uh, when you have a numpad or, or when you have uh, some kind of trackpad on your uh, your laptop, you're able to control the speed at which you want to scroll. And some mice uh, does, this, does it as, as well. Mine scrolls at a fixed rate, but some, uh, some do, uh, does this do it as well. And, and what you're able to do then is implement this as a float number so that when you scroll quickly it will be a, a greater number than if you scroll slowly and if you scroll in the opposite direction it will be a negative number so we have some kind of number representation and if you go to edit project settings input and find the mouse scroll wheel here and this is the what unity has called that number. So if we simply use this mouse scroll wheel here and we get that by using input.getAxis 
and then inputting that name in a string and we can store this in a float and we'll just call this scroll and set that equal to that and then we can maybe just debug.log this out so I can show you how this works. So again, uh, my scroll, scroll wheel is kind of boring in that it scrolls in intervals so it won't uh, look super cool here but you can see that if I scroll up we get 0.1, even 0.2 sometimes if I scroll really quickly we should be able to get some 0.3s in there. And if I scroll down, we get some negative numbers. So we can control how quickly and in what direction we're scrolling. Cool. <laughs> then we can use this variable. And let's use it in such a way that we begin by starring our current position. So we'll uh, do a vector 3 and call this pus for position and make that equal to transform.position, our current position. And let's go in here and find position.y and set uh, and add onto that. Actually, let's subtract that. I think that will be better for the direction of scrolling. So subtract from that um, our scroll multiplied with our scroll speed. And we'll have to go up here and create a public float with our scroll speed and set that to something like five, I believe scroll speed multiplied with time dot delta time. So you can see here now that we are using this variable here that will in my case be something like between minus 0.3 and 0.3 multiplying with our speed and multiplying it with time dot delta time. And you are going to go in here and add some kind of a f uh, larger factor like a thousand uh, because the scroll wheel uh, will um, values are quite small. So I'm just going to throw a thousand in there and that will probably take care of that. And then we can do go down here and apply the position back in. So we can go in and say transform.position equals position.y or <laughs> not position.y but just position and we should see that this is working now. So if I hit clear on the console, hit play, I am able to scroll up and down. The only problem is this is not clamped. So uh, what this means is if I scroll further, we can scroll through the ground and things start looking super weird. And we can also scroll crazy high up in the, uh, in the air here uh, in such a way that, well, it looks super weird with the ground and everything. So um, to fix this, uh, we'll simply clamp this number. So we'll go up here and add another public float. And this is going to be our minimum y. And this is going to be equal to something like 10. And another public float called our maximum y, which is equal to 80. Then we go down here and we say position.y equals math.clamp and uh, the value that we want to restrict is y and we want to make sure that it is between our minimum y and our maximum y. So this will restrict position.y to be between minimum and maximum, which means that it will be between uh, 10 and 80. So if we hit play here now, we should be able to move around all that. We should be able to scroll down, but not further than this. And this is definitely also as far as I want us to be able to go. And then if we scroll up, we won't be able to scroll up higher than this here. And you can do the same or use the same technique to control the panning so that we can pan crazy to the right or uh, back and forwards or something like that. And I definitely recommend that you go under the forum thread if you want to make your uh, camera control movement thing super fine-tuned and uh, feature-packed. But for now, this is going to work for a game and I want to focus on some of the more important gameplay elements, so that will be coming in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in July, and a special thanks to Vixian, Fimazone, Andrew K and Lux Game TV. These videos wouldn't be possible without you.